prepared for the for the surge that would eventually happen? No, absolutely not. You know, um, when we started uh, the foundation, and, and you know, in in earnest, you know, it was uh, 2018. It was uh, three years ago, and you know, we we did investment. You know, we put money aside to help grow the organization, grow the product, improve the product. Um, and so, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's it's immensely rewarding to sort of have that level of validation that people see all of your hard work pay off. Um, I was extraordinarily surprised as to what level though. Um, you know, these, the levels of growth have exceeded all of my expectations. Um, they are beyond what I ever saw at WhatsApp when I was at WhatsApp. Um, and so it's just been an amazing journey. Uh, and, and, you know, not much sleep in the last 72 hours, of course. Um, but we've been able to handle the load levels and, and increase capacity, um, right. you know, keep everything under control um, and, and make sure that everyone's got good service because um, you really want to demonstrate to the world and to, especially to India that uh, we can run the product well. Right. So you mentioned, uh, you know, unlike the early days of WhatsApp, it, it, it is sort of different at Signal right now. Uh, mm-hmm. why, why, why is that? What is the difference that you're seeing, uh, you know, between the early days? And- well, in the early days of WhatsApp, um, not everyone had a smartphone, right. right? So there was there was a natural throttle that you know you would go you would go to the phone store, you would buy a smartphone, and then you would install WhatsApp, um, you know. And and over the following five years or eight years, um, people bought more and more smartphones, and WhatsApp eventually grew to over a billion users. Right. Um, so there were natural, um, you know, sort of throttles. Um, in today's world, everyone already has a smartphone, right. probably their second, second or third or fourth smartphone, right? And so there's no switching cost. Right. Um, and you're in a position where, you know, people can try out your app at any time. Um, a large number of people can try out your app at any time. You have completely global distribution. Mm. Um, you, you know, back in, in 2010, it was, you know, five or six phone platforms. Now it's like two, right? right. iPhone and Android. Right. There's no more Windows phone. There's no more Nokia. There's no more BlackBerry. They're gone. Um, right. Now it's, yeah. So it's a different world. And, um, you know, unprecedented for us, unprecedented levels of growth. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, we're, I guess number one in 40 countries on iPhone. Um, we're num- number one in 18 countries on Android. Right. Um, okay. You know, and um, but you know, I'm here to make sure that we earn those users and retain those users. You know, I want to build a delightful product that protects people's privacy, that makes sure that you know they understand how their data is being used and and if there's any data at all to be used, right? Okay. And, and, um, and so that's why I'm so supportive of what we're trying to, you know, accomplish with Signal. So before I get into the, you know, the whole privacy aspect of things, uh, you mentioned, you know, 40 countries with, uh, with the iOS, you are, you are number one. In 18 Android, 18 countries, you know, you are on the top for Android users as well. Uh, for, say for developing countries like India, you know, which has got a huge smartphone market as well. Um, how difficult is it to really penetrate the market where, you know, say WhatsApp already has a sort of a headway there? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, it's quite difficult. I mean, you know, India has, I think, 400 million uh, WhatsApp users. Um, And so, you know, uh, we're not here to destroy WhatsApp tomorrow. Um, We're here to help people understand that there's alternatives. Okay. And that if, you're, if your privacy matters to you and it's important to you, that you should seek alternatives. Okay. Um, it's not always, oh, I have to use the, the same one that everyone else uses because, you know, maybe I care a little bit more about my privacy or I just don't feel good about them, you know, having access to my photos or something. I, you know, um, and so, you know, we present ourselves as a viable, you know, sort of alternative that leads and innovates around privacy. Right. And, um, you know, we all lead and innovate differently. We have different feature sets, um, but, you know, we're there. 
Absolutely. And in that in that context, do you do you sort of reckon that uh, you know developing countries like India, for instance, uh, people are really you know uh, quite concerned about their privacy, or uh, is th- is that you know not so much of an importance to them at this at this point? I mean, of course, as we evolve, it will change. Well, you know what I've been learning about India in the last week is that a huge public conversation has ignited. Right. And um, you know your mother is asking questions like, oh, should I stop using WhatsApp? And um, I think that's fantastic. That's what we want. We want people to be aware that their data is being handled in ways that they weren't expecting and, and not to be surprised right. that, uh, you know, it's being turned into monetization and, and you know, everything else. Right. So, you know, I, I, um, this is a, just a wonderful opportunity for us to have a public conversation about how data is collected, how data is used, what data is collected, what data is used. Um, you know, Signal is in a position, an ideal position, because our answer typically is nothing. Okay. We have no data. Right. You know, we have your telephone number, of course, but everything else is encrypted. We don't, we can't tell you what you look like. We don't have your, we can't look at your profile photo. We can't look at your messages. We can't look at your groups. We can't look at anything. Right. No one else can make that. No one else can make that guarantee. Right. Right. And, and, and just so, you know, for, for our layman, you know, readers uh, who are not really privy about all of this, uh, why is it, why is all of this uh, important, uh, you know, in the, in the wider scheme of things? Well, <clears throat> what privacy is important and only until you need it, perhaps, you know, it's like, oh, oops, you know, there's a naughty photo on my phone and, and, you know, or, or something else, you know, uh, um, you know, the world's a diverse place, you right. know, in some parts of the world, you have more activism in some parts of the world, you have uh, different attitudes around um, body imagery and, and everything else, you know, uh, different parts of the world have different laws. I mean, it's just, if you're, if you're, if you're using a privacy protecting product and a privacy preserving product like signal, you don't have to worry because privacy comes first right. in everything we do. And then, so if you could just sort of take us through the early days of Signal, I mean, the whole idea, how did it come through, your role that you particularly play there now, and a little bit about the foundation and, and the role that it has, you know, in, in creating a safer world as we go forward. Yeah, so, you know, what, what I did in 2018 is I, you know, I joined up with Moxie Marlin Spike, um, he and I had worked together on bringing the first encryption to WhatsApp. Right. And, uh, you know, I rejoined him with the goal of advancing. Um, back then it was called Open Whisper Systems and turning, turning that into Signal Foundation and creating, you know, a proper nonprofit um, right. organization. And so I, we went through all that. We did all the um, legal paperwork. We did all the IRS paperwork. We did all the the things that the government requires you to do. And now we are a properly certified 501c3 nonprofit. Right. But what I also did is what was important to me when you do this is you have to invest. And so, you know, he and I sort of thought about, you know, how much money would we need to put in, you know, for about three years. And that's where we came up with the 50 million number. Okay. And uh, we're approaching the three-year anniversary uh, in the in February. Um, so, and and so that you know the, this is that culmination of that investment. Um, you hire more people, you buy more servers, you know, you do all the you do the needful, right? right. You do exactly what's necessary uh, for you to grow your organization, your business, and um, and we have a you know we have a brilliant team um, mm-hmm. that you know we've. We fixed bugs. Um, we added features. Uh, we, you know, we can, and we continue to do that. And we, we have momentum, and you know, momentum creates more momentum. You know, acceleration creates more acceleration. And so we, we feel good uh, about sort of this validation and this opportunity to really shine and to show off our product. And you know, it's not perfect, of course. Um, hmm. we, we we haven't built every feature. You know, WhatsApp has status. Telegram has channels, um, but you know what we have is rock solid security and privacy. So, would right? you and 
would these things sort of tempt you? I mean, you know, these things that, you know, a lot of people might find interesting uh, to sort of go out and do that as well? I think there's room for them to exist. Um, you know, every, every, all these features are interesting in their own way. I think mm -hmm. for us to build them, we would always want to do them in a privacy preserving way. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan of completely public products um, because they often uh, require some level of moderation um, as, it, as it relates to the laws and governances of various areas of the world. Um, you know, different people have different stances on hate speech, and have different stances on nudity, on all kinds of different areas. Uh, I just, I don't like being having to make those rules and having to enforce those rules because they're hard uh, and they require a lot of people. Um, you know, we've built a system where your conversations are private to you. We don't have to look at them and we don't have to make any decisions about what's right and wrong about your conversations that you have with your people. Right. So at some point, uh, you know, I, I know the foundation exists, but at some point, uh, wouldn't you consider sort of monetizing? I mean, how will you go forward, uh, you know, if you have to keep pumping the money? Well, so there's always, um, you know, the difference between, uh, you know, a company, a commercial company and a nonprofit company is that, uh, you know, a commercial company works for profit and um, a non-commercial company basically works to be break even. Right. So you have to cover your costs, right? And so, you know, how do we think about that? Well, we think about that in terms of running ourselves lean, of course, making sure that, you know, we're efficient with our servers and, and all of our cost structures um, in the same way that Wikipedia does it. Right. Wikipedia runs a global worldwide service um, and how does Wikipedia survive? Well, they do it on donations right. and, you know, and grants and everything else. Right. Same thing with us, right? Um, so, you know, that initial money that I put in was essentially a bootstrap. It, it got the got a foundation going. Hmm. And then, you know, our, our goal and expectation is to convert that into more donations over time. And it becomes self, self-sustaining. That's that's how you do it. But but you will, I mean, just like Wikipedia, I, I think at some point you will have to keep sort of, you know, raising money, either donations or otherwise, right? Yeah. And this past December, we put up a donation banner in December. Um, you know, it's very common in many countries to do donations in the, in the December time window. Right. Um, you know, of, of course, we will take donation any time of year. But, um, you know, you have your donor drives um, and that creates revenue flows. Um I think it's better to do it, you know, more on a continuous basis right. uh, so that you have more of sort of what it would I've, more to say like a steady stream. Um, mm. But it's important to underscore that donations are voluntary. Right. right? And, and, you know, our goal and our hope and our expectation is to delight the user, not that they feel like they have to give you money, but because they want to give you money. Right. Um, that's that's the product I want to build. Absolutely. And, and, you know, talking about the product you'll want to build, uh, I, I must ask you about, you know, what has is, what is essentially uh, sort of gone wrong with uh, WhatsApp of late and, uh, and how do you think that, that, you know, the new policies, et cetera, will th there'll be some sort of reconsideration from, the, from Facebook's point of view? Yeah, I, you know, they, they had this looming problem that they had to update their terms of service and privacy policy. Um, and they have various goals and ambitions to monetize. Um, and again, because they are for profit, they seek profit, right? Right. And, and so they've constructed a very complicated terms of service and privacy policy. And now they're struggling with the explanation of that to, you know, to retain the confidence of the user base and the trust of the user base that they're not just going to willy nilly sell your data and, and, and do things with it. Um, and so, you know, people are questioning it, people are analyzing it, people are, uh, I saw actually a really good in-depth interview by a TV reporter um, about it. Um, uh, and so, you, you know, that's where you run afoul is, and you, you know, you compare that to Signal where like our terms of service and privacy policy is very simple. Right. And it, it helps to underscore that like, you know, we're just about protecting your privacy. 
Mm-hmm. We're not there to try to try to figure out how to get you to talk to businesses so that you can, you know, buy something, right? We're there to help you have private conversations. Right. The, you know, the private conversations are oftentimes the most critical and important ones in your life, right? Absolutely. Um, they're the intimate ones and we protect that. Understood. And then how do you sort of, after all these years, the product that you built, uh, WhatsApp that you built, uh, how do you see where it's going right now? Are you, are you, are you sort, of, sort of indifferent to it, happy about it, unhappy about it? Well, you know, in, in a lot of ways, um, you know, I'm a parent and at a certain point, your child grows up and they go into the world and um, they do things that you like and they do things that you don't like. And you have to accept it. Um, I think I'm at that place with WhatsApp, and, and you know, it was a wonderful, um, you know, sort of journey for me um, to and to do that with WhatsApp. But I've moved on in my life, and um, you know, to me, you know, Signal is not only my passion; it's my full time job. Uh, it's how I, you know, it's my life's work, and um, and that's how I, you know, I didn't go back into another startup. I didn't go. Um, sit on a beach and, you know, do that. I, I decided that, you know, I could do something meaningful um, for the rest of my life. And, and that's why I jumped into what I'm doing now. Understood. And, and when it comes to the government, uh, you know, India for long had been talking about a data privacy bill as well. That hasn't really seen the light of the day right now. But can, can sort of governments, uh, and I'm sure the Indian data privacy law would have sort of thwarted what uh, WhatsApp had been planning in India. But do you think the government has a concrete role here to play in terms of protecting privacy? I think the government um, always has the right and will choose to write laws, um, especially democratic governments, where people want laws uh, for this, these types of um, regulations. Um, <clears throat> you know, Signal often pos- ends up in a very positive light against these regulations hmm. uh, because Signal is... is has so little data about you, um, you know, we're automatically in compliance with most of these data regulations. Right. You know, classically, you know, a good example was, the, the, you know, the European GDPR, um, where virtually we had to do nothing to be compliant, right? Understood. Whereas, you know, other companies have to do jump through hoops and build all these infrastructure to be compliant. So um, I'm not often worried about the, the laws that come up, that get written um, right. because they're usually biased towards privacy anyway. Um, and uh, we're a very private product and it works in our favor. Absolutely. And and where do you see Signal sort of, now that the three-year three period is over, where do you see Signal in its uh, sort of next leg uh, going forward? Well, I, I want to continue to build out this flagship product. The Messenger is core, I think, to the ideas of Signal and the principles of Signal. Um, and when I get to a level of comfort and self-sustainability, that's when I would love to start to think about expanding the mission, uh, the scope of the mission. You know, do we go tackle something else? Um, but I'm a very focused person, and I want to make sure that Signal is is a a model of excellence first, um, and it and it, that itself you know sort of can can sell survive independently. Right. Before before I try try to go tackle anything else. But have you have you given thoughts to maybe some other areas that you might want to tackle? Oh, geez. I mean, I think the world is our oyster there. I mean, there's, uh, you know, storage, there's email, there's groups and forums, there's um, other communication, you know, scenarios that, you know, people people use every day. Um, right. And I, and I think that the world could benefit from a, a privacy treatment in all those areas. But even then, you might just you might be you know taking heads on with some of the world's most powerful you know companies or people. Uh, what gives you the sort of strength to go ahead with that? And I, I'm sure these are people you might know quite personally as well, right? So they might do yeah, everything in their power yeah. to sort of. I uh, mean, in some ways, I'm I'm I am the 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 David going against the Goliath that I created, right? Right. Um, <laughs> it, you know not to mix metaphors, but some could call me the, the Don Quixote uh, chasing a windmill here. Right. Um, you know, I think that, you know, I stand on my principles the most. And, um, you know, having been in industry 
and seeing how um, the industry has um, developed um, around um, advertising and, and behavior tracking and user tracking, um, I'm here to stand on my principles and present alternatives. You know, I'm not going to just say the world should be a different place. I'm actually going to go try to build the world a better place. Absolutely. And that's that's what you know. That's why I wake up every morning. That's why I go to work every morning. And that's why I don't sit on a beach um, and sip, you know, cocktails or whatever. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think that that covers most of what I wanted to speak to you about. So um, I wish you the best, uh, you know, in doing all of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not going to be easy, but I'm sure, you know, stand on your principles. And, yeah. It's a long journey. So. <laughs> Absolutely.